Hey guys, it's Tony from A&E Construction. You're watching Build with A&E, and today we're gonna to show you how I set our staircase out. So the first thing I always do, guys, is I look at the space where the staircase is gonna go. So let's go and have a look, shall we? So as you can see here, I've started to construct the staircase, but what we actually do is the staircase is actually starting from here, and then it's gonna come all the way up and all turn all the way up to there. So this is classed as a left-hand staircase. The inner leaf or the inner string is going to be curved, okay? The outer string, which is gonna be here, is square. Now, if you just come over here, I'll show you guys. So this string line is gonna come all the way from here, all the way along this wall, it's the, which represents over there. It's then gonna come from here and then go all the way up to the, to the top of the trimmer. The inner part of the string is then gonna curve all the way around. So the first thing I do, guys, is I set my risers and I set my treads out. So what I do is I get myself a bit of timber like this. This is our class as my string. Now, I know that my floor to floor, floor to floor is 2.8, exactly. Now, what I do is I know I've divided 2.8 into 14 rises, 2 meters 800, divide that then by 14 equals 200 rise, that's what it is. I then get myself another little block like this. I start drawing loads of treads and risers because I can then start to think about the staircase, any obstacles, any problems that I might incur as building the staircase, it starts to get me in that sort of thought process. Now we know that we need 14 rises, that's the other thing I'll mark down here. But if you now look, it actually states we've actually got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen major steps. So the reason I do this is because then when I set this all out, I know in my head that I've got 13 major treads and then I've got the small header tread, which is the 14th small tread here. So what I would then do is I would then draw that case now out of my board. So what I've done is that I've marked out my case is 950, uh, 950 then from this point. My measurement outside is 26 and 26. So I then join the pieces together. So you can actually see I've joined that point to that point, that point there to that point there. That allows me then to get a trammel and arc it all the way around to a lovely, beautiful curve. So you can see here, look, at the moment, I can then put my trammel point in here. I then go to my 950 point and then I get the trammel and then arc it all the way around to a lovely curve like this, okay? I then go to the center of the 950 because there are regulations that we have to stick to. I go to the center of that and then arc that all the way around as well. The staircase has to be 42 degrees, no more than 42. Now my rise is 200. By the time I've laid it all out, a one-to-one -one scale, I've then got 225 in between from face a riser to face a riser. So it's really important when you're looking at stairs, you're looking at two things, they class. It's called a pitch line and also rise and go. So basically I've just drawn that out there. So the pitch line is this line where you have all of the, the points knocking together like this. This would come through. This is then face of riser to then face of riser, okay? And then this is your tread. Now obviously you have a nosing on this like this but it's always from that point there. And my rise is 200 and my go is 225. So I know that when I've thrown the trammel through the center of the staircase, I'm then complying to regulations, which is really, really important. I'm actually below 42 degrees, so which is really, really good. Right, so the next thing, once I then start laying this out, I've got 2.6 this way, 2.6 this way. And my staircase is 950 wide, 950 wide. I then get my trammel, as I said earlier, and mark it out as the curve. I then do the center of the staircase, mark that out as well. I then divide it up into equal sections, which I've then done. I know that I've got 14 risers and then 13 major treads, okay? So I literally then on here, I mark out then 13 treads. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 equal treads on the inner circumference, which is the inner string. I then mark then 13 equal on the center of the staircase. 
So literally one, two, as you can see, count earlier. I then make sure that I've got enough rises, so I then literally count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 rises. So because I like to draw it out and visualize it, I then know that I can't make mistakes, hopefully anyway. Um, so this is really, really key that I look at everything I can to try and eliminate any mistake, anything that could potentially come up where I think, ah, that's not gonna look right. When I first drew this staircase out, I had it originally straight like this, and then a curve and then straight, and I thought, oh, well, that sounds nice, but the one thing I didn't want, I didn't want the handrail to come up and then have a slight odd kick here, and then curve around beautifully and a slight little odd kick here. Even though they flowed nicely, I just thought, oh, wouldn't it be really, really nice to have a lovely constant curve? And that's what we've done. We've designed the staircase to have that lovely curve, which will make a really feature in the house because obviously what we want to do is we'll come in three treads and basically have a lovely massive 1930s norm post and we'll do some lovely sweeping treads onto this like this. So really make a big feature of this staircase. Okay, so it's really, really key. One of the things I'm toying with is whether we should actually make this bottom tread actually a bigger bottom tread. So in other words, that if we move this tread all the way around and pull it all the way around past the norm post, and then the second tread in, pull that all the way around past the north post slightly. And then the third tread actually then get into the north post. It might make a nicer feature. I mean, just give us your views and comments down below and let's go from there and see what everybody else thinks as well. So what we've been doing here is the staircase here. We can see that from that point there to over to here. To this point here is where the other timber's going to go. This is 950 mil wide because that's how wide we want to make the staircase. We then route out all of these bits into the MDF and also the plywood. Now, the reason we do this is because we're going to create a cradle. Now, you're probably thinking, what are all these points representing? Now, these points are representing the face of every riser. So in other words, what I've done from this point here, you can probably see this point here, I've arced around. So if we literally move out over to here, we've got there this curve. And you can actually see that curve there going all the way around, nice curve. We've then then gone to then the center of the staircase, which is here. So we then arch all the way around. Now what you then do is, what I do, I then divide all of the, the risers up. Now in this, we've got 14 risers. That means we've got 13 treads. So basically I've then gone, you can probably see a very small pinpoint there and the pinpoint there, because I use my trammel, which is over here. This trammel device, there you go, there it is there. And all I've done is just literally gone from point to point like this, to point, to point, to point. That's what I've done. Now, when I first set this out, I did that all the way around. I sort of worked out this arc would be around about the 165 center. Now, when I actually threw the first divisions all the way through, my trammel actually stops about here. So I had to gain in a mill over this. So I just moved this by a mill and then I then re-threw all of the actual tread lines again and then it actually then finished nice and perfect here. And it's the same as you do for this over here. This line here, just set them all out, running all the way through on the arc. And then all you then do is so you have a nice even tread you then come back to this point line here and you then just line everything through. And then you can see I've got more cages going on here, which will then take the string line along this side here and then the string line along here. It will become a little bit more self-evident as I'm starting to build it up. And you probably think, oh, why is it past this plaster line? Because obviously I need a bit of material behind what I'm doing to create the cage. And you can see I've got the same distance here. So when the staircase pushes back, it will actually be level with this point here, which is where I want it to be. So you're probably wondering what these holes are here and why I've done them. I have a bit of CLS, 4-2 CLS. And if you imagine, that goes in the hole like that. And basically what that does, that allows me to set the cage up and that's face a riser to this point here. And what you do is basically to get this router you can see I've done the jig over here. But you can imagine that goes in there like that. And the way I've done this is by actually 
making a router guide box. So if you can imagine, this is actually bigger than the CLS. So if I place the CLS inside, you can see I've got an eight mil gap all the way around. And the reason we got this eight mil gap is because of the router that's over here. So when you look at the cutter, and what I actually do is that I look at the router, look at the collar that you put onto the base of the router. I measure them from this point here. So I've got eight mil there. So to the outside of the collar, to this point here is eight mil. So I literally do that all the way around. So that's about 8.5. So as you can see, I cut this out and then we router around. So what happens is, if you can imagine, I put that router into the hole here like this, move it around like this, cut everything out and then, then produces this hole, which means that I can then put that in there like that. As you can see, we've got the cradle in the back of us here. So you can see what we've been doing. We've been routing all the pockets in the bottom all the way around here. We put the MDF top plate, which is above us here. Let me see all the routers. We've overlaid the MDF on top of the ply. We then router all the pockets in, as you can see all here. So this is our classes now. We're in our third stage. The first stage is marking out all of this staircase. The second stage is then routing all the pockets. The third stage is then putting all the cradles in. I've used CLS because it's really, really nice straight timber compared to other timber. So you can use it from your local merchant, sift through all the really nice straight lengths. These represent all the face of each riser, which is really cool. As I was saying earlier, guys, what we've got here is this is the bottom of the staircase. Now, the reason I've built the cage this way is because I like to be able to fly my strings through on the staircase. Now, obviously, flying the strings through, I wouldn't be able to do that here because it would hit this point because obviously everything's been worked out so it hits that trimmer up here. So what we've done, guys, is this is now me setting all of this out to a one-to-one -one scale. So in other words, all of this represents the outside wall where the string's gonna be. It represents the other return 90 degrees where that is as well. Also represents the inner curve of the inner string, okay? Now, the thing that you'll probably notice on here, you can see the lines running in. Each of these lines that go all the way back to the other string, they represent the face of the riser. Do you remember me talking about earlier about the face of the riser? And what I do is when I'm routing out my pockets, I make sure the front of the timber is representing the face of the riser. And the same here, the corner point here, because obviously this is 90 degrees. If this was curved as well, this timber would be the other way like this and it'll be on this angle here, but it's not, this is at 90 degrees. So I make sure the corner of the timber and the face of the timber come to my face of my riser. And as you can see over there, and you can see where I've laid it out. I've got then 13 treads all the way around and I know that top point there is where it's gonna hook up onto my trimmers. So that shows you the scale that we have to draw all in detail. You then put it all together. You router into the MDF, you router into the ply, 18 mil ply. 
You then get the CLS, you make yourself a little jig that you see earlier, and you then route a little pockets in and you're away. So guys, hopefully you'll understand a little bit about what we're doing here now. If you don't, please put any comments down below. Anything that I can answer, any details, just send them over to me. If you like this video, hit that like button. Also, while you're there, if you can subscribe, that'd be great. And have a great day.